What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. So recently AWS has announced Lambda support for Amazon Elastic file system and basically it's generally available and I think it's interesting. So hence uh, now we can mount and use the Elastic file system in our Lambda function. So well, in this tutorial, I will take you through on how to configure and integrate EFS with a Lambda function. So let's get started. So I have come up with a few points. EFS system is always created within VPC, hence uh, the Lambda function that we will use to access EFS system should be also in same VPC. Apart from that, we have to use same security group within EFS and the Lambda function. And also we need to open 2049 port in a security group in order to access the EFS file system from the Lambda function, correct? So these are the few points that you might want to note. Now moving along to the steps. So these are the steps that we are going to follow throughout this tutorial. So the very first thing that we will do is creation of the VPC. So in my case, I'm going to use the default VPC. So I'm not going to do that. So you might want to create the custom VPC. Then we will create the security group followed by the creation of the elastic file system and then uh, the IAM role for the Lambda function followed by the creation of the Lambda function. Then finally we will configure VPC within Lambda function and the very last step is to configure elastic file system within Lambda function. So let's get started. So as I said, I'm going to use default VPC. So we will start from the second step that is creation of the security group. So now navigate to AWS management console so we can create a security group from EC2 console or even from the VPC console. Correct. So I will go to EC2 basically. You might want to go to VPC. Correct. Now within EC2 management console, scroll the left panel and click on security groups under network and security. Now here I will create a security group. So click on create security group, give it a name. I will say Lambda EFS hyphen security group, give a description, we'll copy and paste. Select the VPC. Uh, so in my case, it's going to be default one. So I'm going to select that and we will leave the inbound rule and outbound rule as it is. And we will say create security group. Correct. So right now we don't have any inbound rule. We have the outbound rule that is for all traffic. So we will come back at later point of time to add on inbound rule uh, if we need somewhere. Right. So for now we will leave it as it is. Now, once the security group is created, the next step is to create the EFS file system that is uh, elastic file system. So navigate to AWS management console and search for EFS. Now, once you are within elastic file system management, click on create file system. Now here, the very first step is the configure network access. So in case if you have created the custom VPC, then you might want to select that. In my case, I will go with the default VPC and then we have the create mount targets. So here we have a couple of availability zone. You might want to move with all the availability zone. So here, uh, one thing we are going to do is we are going to select the security group that we have just created. So in my case, it's going to be the Lambda EFS hyphen SG. So I will replace that. Now, once we're done with this configuration and click on next step. Now here you can add a tag if you want. Maybe I will say name as a tag Lambda EFS. Now here we have some new option that is enable lifecycle management. So you can select the lifecycle policy if you want. So right now I will select none. I will leave it as it is basically. Then uh, we are also going to leave rest of the option as it is that is choose throughput mode. So this can be based on your uh, usage. So you can select bursting or provision as per your requirement. Then within performance mode, we will go with general purpose. Again, this depends on the requirement. So you might want to go with max IO depending on the use case that you are working on. Correct. 
and then we have the final option that is enable encryption at rest so you might want to enable that for security purpose so i will recommend to enable this encryption uh, while you are deploying this thing in production correct now once you are done with this configuration click on next step now here we have the file system policy so you can check certain option like disable root access by default and enforce read only access by default and whatnot right so you might want to do that i will recommend again if you are deploying this to production then you have to and you need to set some policy now moving along so here we have access point so here we are going to add access point so click on add access point give it a name i will say lambda efs then we have posix user so basically uh, posix is nothing but portable operating system interface uh, so basically it's a standard for operating system so i will say uh, 1000 basically here we'll give it a group id so this is optional right and here we will give the directory path that we want to map correct so i will say maybe slash mm, access and then uh, i will say owner user id as 1000 same as posix user and here the last option that we have is for the permission so what kind of permission that you want to give so i will say triple seven and finally i will say next now here you can review your configuration and once you are done with that click on create file system now the file system is successfully created and now it's creating the mount target so it will create individual network interface for each of the availability zone correct so it's creating now while this is being created let's check what is the next step now we have created efs now we need to go ahead and create iam role so here for iam role i had mentioned the permission that we will need in order to execute or access the efs file system successfully from the lambda function so we will be using three permission that is lambda execute vps access execution rule and elastic file system client full access so let's jump to the iam management console now once you are within iam management console click on roles from the left panel say create role now here we will select lambda as a service because we are creating this IAM role for the lambda function say next permissions. Now here as I said uh, we are going to attach or add three policies three or three permission policies that is lambda execute. The another one is VPC that is AWS lambda VPC access execution role and finally efs that is elastic file system and then click on next tags add a tag if you want say next review give it a role name i will say lambda underscore efs and say create role now once the role is created the next step is to create the lambda function so we will move on to the lambda management console now once you are within lambda management console click on create function from the top right corner give it a function name i will say lambda underscore efs and that's it i will select runtime as python 3.8 Within permission, I will say use an existing role and we will select the role that we have just created that is lambda underscore EFS and we will say create function. Now let's check what's the next step. So we have VPC, we have security group, we have EFS, we have IAM role and the lambda function. Now we need to configure VPC within that Lambda function. So navigate to Lambda function that is Lambda underscore EFS in my case. Scroll down to VPC. Now here click on edit and select custom VPC. Select the VPC. So in my case, it's going to be the default VPC. Select the subnet. So I will go with two subnets. So I will say USH1A and USH1C. 
and finally we need to select the security group so we will select the security group that we have created as the second step so in my case it's lambda efs hyphen sg and we are done so click on save now once you are done with the configuration of vpc it will take some time to update the function so you need to wait for that once the function is updated successfully we will go ahead and configure the efs that is elastic file system so scroll down to file system and say add file system now here we need to add the file system so we need to select the efs file system that we have created as uh, second or third step so in my case it's lambda efs and then we need to select the access point that we have created so that is lambda efs again and finally we need to configure the local mount path so that part should have a prefix of slash mnt slash access and once you are done with this configuration say save now here we have successfully configured the file system so now we are going to edit a code so here we will say we will say import os and then we will say print os dot list directory that is list dir followed by the path of the efs file system that is slash mnt slash access so i want to see uh, what is the content within that directory and then i will add a string i will say before and once i do os dot list directory within that path i will say or i will go ahead and add a file i will say with open slash mnt slash access followed by the file name that i want to create on that path so i will say some file dot txt and now i want to open that file in write mode and then i will say as f and i will say f dot write i will write some string over there maybe hello from lambda and this should be able to create a file on that path and then again i will do print after that is after creating a file i want to do list directory on the same path so i will copy and paste and we are done with this lambda function so i will say save I will say test create the event I will say test again So here we have an error saying calling the invoke api action field with this message and blah 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 right so it says check your network configuration and try again so if we go back here and look at points to note then we have the last point that is open 2049 port in security group so we will go back to the security group that we have created we will say edit inbound rules and here we will add a rule saying custom tcb followed by 2049 port and within source we will say anywhere and i will say save rules now once you are done with this configuration let's try to reinvoke the lambda function so i will click on test so as you can see now the lambda function has been executed successfully now we can look at the logs so click on logs and now as you can see we have the start request id and then we are printing before uh, that is being written as blank or empty and then we created the file that is some file.txt and then we again did list directory on the same path and as you can see we have the file saying some file.txt correct uh, so here i do see some uh, latency while accessing efs uh, but well overall this is how you can integrate or add the elastic file system within the lambda function 
So now as we know that uh, we can use Lambda layers to deploy certain packages and we can reuse across multiple Lambda function. But it does have some limitation that is storage limitation in terms of 250 MB after deployment. Hence we cannot deploy certain packages that exceeds that uh, limit, right? So well, uh, in that case, EFS can come handy for sharing uh, software packages or binaries that are otherwise too large for Lambda layers. So well, uh, this is how you can access or integrate the Elastic File System with Lambda function. So well, in the next tutorial, I will show you that how we can import certain packages, for example, pandas within Lambda function from the Elastic File System. So well, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. And till that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below. And I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.